In this captivating episode we will explore another terrifying story that engulfed the life of the mother of six. This is the heartbreaking tale of Brittany, whose life starts out in love and ends in unimaginable terror at the hands of 42-year-old Terry Jackson, while she was trying to help her friend out of an abusive relationship. Her body was found in her car in Racine, Wisconsin. In an attempt to free her friend from an abusive relationship, Brittany went to the house of that friend where the woman had previously lived with Jackson. But little did Brittany know, she was setting herself up for a trap set by a guy driven by wrath and revenge. Brittany was an energetic soul who resided in the heart of Racine, Wisconsin. She was well known for her unshakable love for her six children and her unyielding commitment to giving them a better life. Brittany worked long hours in order to support her huge family, and her days were full with both chaos and joy. Her home was a haven where love overcame all obstacles, and her laughter reverberated throughout the corridors. Terry Jackson used to be someone Brittany's friend loved and hung out with. Like all stories, there started off as a whirlwind romance full with promises of forever. But beneath the surface, evil lingered, ready to devour their once perfect union. As time passed, bitterness and unresolved complaints caused fissures in their relationship. Jackson's seething rage and his girlfriend's desperate attempts to hold on to what was left of their love caused arguments to grow explosive. Jackson lost his temper on February 21, 2022, while traveling back from Illinois, the location of his court hearing. Jackson was accompanied by his former partner. His ex-partner claimed he repeatedly shoved her, stuck his fingers in her eyes, and held her by the throat. In addition, she claimed he threatened to cut her, from one side to the next, with a box cutter and that if she reported him for assaulting her. While she was receiving treatment in the emergency department for injuries she had reportedly sustained in the attack, police recorded her statement. The woman, Jackson's girlfriend went to the house she had shared with Jackson on February 27 in order to get her personal stuff back. She went there with her friend, Brittany and her two-years-old daughter. The woman found her possessions missing when she got there. She called Jackson, thinking he was out of the region, to inquire about the whereabouts of her belongings. That's when Brittany started to worry that Jackson could actually be nearby. She persuaded her friend to depart. But just as they were about to depart, Jackson showed up at the house with a hammer. He attacked Brittany, who was attempting to protect her daughter while making a 911 call, after attacking his ex-girlfriend. Brittany made an attempt to escape to the home of a neighbor but Jackson pursued her and had threatened to murder her. The two ladies sought refuge at a bar, where they were discovered by police. Brittany had a head injury and was bleeding on the ground. Brittany informed police that Jackson had threatened to kill her and had a massive cut on her face. She was also covered in blood. The 24th of April saw the third attack. When Brittany's 13-year-old son woke up and saw that his mother and her car were gone, the inquiry got underway. Following a report of suspicious activity, the Racine Police Department dispatched a response to the Villa Esti residence. Blood was discovered on the bed, the dining room floor, and Brittany's two-year-old daughter's pajamas, she had been sharing a bed with her mother. At roughly 5.30 a.m., doorbell footage showed a man removing Brittany from the house. Brittany's phone was traced to a location close to Park Street and 15th Street. Her car was discovered close to 13th and Villa Streets. Investigators discovered Brittany suffering from a single gunshot wound to the head while seated in the driver's seat. Brittany drove around before she was killed, according to GPS data from her phone, and detectives believe Jackson may have been looking for his ex-partner. Jackson is said to have left the state following the murder. On May 22, he was found and taken into custody. Tonight, a man is behind bars for the murder of a Racine mother of six. Terry Jackson is accused of killing Brittany Booker back in April. Her youngest daughter is just two years old. Brittany's father now raising her children. Bruce Harrison spoke to him about what he's feeling now that an arrest has been made. Leonard Larry was one of the first to know. I'm on time waiting, coming right there. And to, to wake up to a text, got him. Uh, it's the best film in the world. But for Larry, this isn't closure, it's just the next step. Any court date, any kind of parole, anything the guy do with him, I'm gonna be there. This, you, you is not walking on oh, nothing. According to Racine Police, U.S. Marshals arrested Terry Jackson at a home in Chicago after a brief standoff. He's accused of attacking two women, including Booker, in February in Racine.
Police couldn't find him, and later in April, he allegedly killed Booker. Larry tells us that Racine investigator Don Nuttall did an outstanding job getting his man. Larry only wishes that Nuttall had been on the case from that first attack. If he had been at the beginning, We probably wouldn't be here if he had took the case from the beginning. But we got him, Brett. We got him. Larry has cleared the last things out of his daughter's home. Booker's six kids, who used to run around here, are now living with their grandmother. I'm upset about a lot of things, but worse, you know, but it, 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 it's over. They got him. So let's see what system we're going to do. Yeah. Let's hope they don't film me on that part. Larry's next move is something he's good at, something Brittany loved. He plans to throw monthly barbecues at a local park for the community to honor Brittany's memory. Reporting in Racine, Bruce Harrison, TMJ4 News. Jackson asked to represent himself in the court. During his most recent hearing, the trial for Jackson was scheduled for November. The trial was rescheduled until February 26, 2024, due to a problem at the public defender's office. He was accused of first-degree deliberate killing using a lethal weapon, two charges of attempting to kill someone in the first degree intentionally while using a hazardous weapon, abduction, having a gun in one's possession after being found guilty of a crime, first-degree careless endangerment of safety by the use of a weapon that poses a risk, following someone and getting hurt. Use of a hazardous weapon during false incarceration, constriction, substantial battery, intimidating the sufferer. 12 felonies related to bail jumping. New tonight, two more women arrested in connection to the death of Brittany Booker. Racine police arrested Carmelita Walker and Alicia Sykes for harboring and aiding Terry Jackson, the convicted felon wanted for killing Booker. Diamond Hood was previously arrested. And now the Racine community is coming together to honor the young mother killed Sunday. At a vigil for Brittany Booker, dozens showed up. They had one message, stop the violence. CBS 58's Taj Mahal is in Racine with their call to action. Family, friends, and community members are demanding justice for Brittany Booker. I spoke to Brittany's father, who says he just wants to see the man responsible for his daughter's death held accountable. It gets rough. And I'm glad we caught three of them, but we need to catch him. Leonard Larry says his daughter Brittany will be remembered for her giving spirit and the love she had for her children. She gives you a shirt off her back. Brittany was a, 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 a she's about everything, you know. Dozens of people showing support for Britney's family during a vigil calling for an end to community violence. I appreciate the love and support for my daughter. In times like these, it is essential that our community comes together. As the community stands with Britney's family, they also call for peace and an end to violence across the city. And as a community, we will um, use all of our resources to put an end to it. As the family waits for justice, the pain of the loss runs deep. I will give anything to have you back, baby. Anything. Police are actively looking for Terry Jackson Jr. in connection to Brittany's death. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 262-636-9330. In Racine, Taj Mahal, CBS 58 News. Saturday. We are reminded of the frailty of life and the resiliency of the human spirit as we come to the end of this chapter in Brittany Booker's narrative. She's touched everybody in her own way, Booker's friend Brianna Schuster remembered. She was one of a kind. May her memory endure in the hearts of those who knew her, serving as a ray of hope in a world that is much too frequently engulfed in gloom. We hope Brittany continues to rest in peace. We just hope for a great life for Brittany Booker's children. May Brittany's story inspire us to be vigilant, compassionate, and committed to ending violence in all its forms. In loving memory of Brittany Booker forever in our hearts.